Corey always tries to slot me right before the break. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, when I finish up, I guess we get a little break here. Hey, want to thank you and, and all the coaches here, and uh, John, Tom, welcome to the uh, to the GPAC conference. I'm sure you'll uh, you enjoy this conference. There's good people, good places to play football, and, and just a great situation. I uh, also want to thank Dave Repstock, he's our sports information director, uh, does a great job of putting together our prospectus, does a great job of, uh, of running uh, the, the information that comes out of Morningside College, and I'm very pleased at Morningside with Dave and the job he does. At Morningside, uh, you know, we're excited about this coming year. We feel really good about uh, the way our guys finished the season last year. We feel they had a, a great off season in preparation for this coming year with uh, with uh, many players returning. Uh, big change for us will probably be uh, the loss of our defense coordinator, Ryan Norris. Ryan was the, uh, the last uh, coach that, that, that came in with me when, uh, when uh, we re, uh, restarted up football morning side and made the move to NAI. So uh, it'll be a big loss. Uh, Jay Christensen, who uh, coached at Kearney last year, will be our, our defense coordinator. And we're excited about the job that, that, uh, that he's going to do. On the defensive side of the ball, uh, we have a lot of players returning. Uh, major loss for us will be uh, Chad Houston at safety. Chad was a, an All-American and uh, Defensive Player of the Year, and we, we are definitely going to miss Chad. And uh, we're going to miss uh, two uh, defensive linemen that started for us. Outside of that, most of our guys are back. Uh, Aaron Klein played a corner for us last year. is going to move to safety uh, in replace of Chad. And, uh, and we feel we got some young guys up front on the D-line that, uh, that we're asking to step forward. Uh, Dante Williams, who came on late in the year for us, uh, is expected to step up a little bit. A young man named Vernon Moore, who uh, sat out last year on the defensive line, is coming back. And uh, Travis Uelman, uh, who has started for two years, uh, hopefully can step up there. At linebacker, we feel real good about our situation. All four of our starters return, uh, plus uh, Ben Lober, and Dave Pink, who uh, started the first two games of the season for us before they were injured. And so we feel we have a very competitive situation at linebacker, and, uh, and we're excited uh, about what we have there. On offense, uh, we return our quarterback, Ian Gilworth, and uh, it's always great to return uh, a quarterback. And uh, you know these guys, even as they come up, and that's something they talk about. If it's, a, if it's an area of competition, uh, it, it uh, relieves a lot of doubt when you know who you have returning. Uh, matter of fact, we return all of our skilled players, uh, and, and we're excited about that. Uh, we had three receivers last year with over 50 catches, uh, Blake Anderson, Bo Kildo, and Antoine Bloom. And so we're excited about uh, uh, the passing game and where some of those things uh, have come. We know we need to be able to run the ball better, and uh, we uh, ran with basically two running backs last year, Pete Lewis and Tyler Childers. They're both back. Uh, we feel real good about uh, a young man named Joe Hunter coming out of spring ball. Uh, Joe had transferred in from Northwest Missouri last year and was hurt most of the season, but we feel he had a great spring and, and we're excited about where he is and think we're going to have a great competition. Uh, for my first time here, we returned both our punter and kicker in uh, C.J. Gradiville and Nate Yostin, and so we're excited about what they can do. Uh, any questions? Coach, you mentioned uh, all the statistical leaders back. Um, as a coach, what's that? I mean, it's got to be a beneficial, you know, benefit for you to have uh, guys like that back and make your job much easier. It is. Uh, if, if they work hard and, and they choose to get better in the offseason, we feel they have. Um, but, yeah, it takes a lot of uncertainty in, in terms of uh, what to expect in those areas. And like I said, the key one is quarterback. It, um, it always is good to have a returning quarterback, uh, uh, which is a good situation. So talked about trying to get better on the run and the running game. What are you trying to do? What, what different things might you try this evening? Uh, we want to get more than three yards on a carry. <laughs> uh, and so uh, we're working on uh, falling forward and uh, those kind of things. But, uh, but you know, uh, you know, we're, we're going to, you know, we've, we've spent some work on just, you know, schematically trying to do things better in the off season. And, uh, you know, one of the things we, we know is we probably just need to get better at the running back position. And, uh, and, and we're hoping that uh, uh, the two guys that we have coming back are continuing to improve and, and that maybe someone can come in and, and make it a little bit better. But without question, we know that that's a part of the game that we got to get better at. Great.
replacing a guy like Houston, obviously said he had someone else moving in there. Is a guy like Joel Nixon coming up? Is he going to see some playing time possibly there too? Uh, possibly, yeah. You know, uh, Joel, uh, we're very excited about Joel coming in. He's, uh, for those who don't know, uh, is coming in from Wakefield, Nebraska, and uh, uh, a very uh, exciting high school career there. And, uh, and we definitely think that Joel will be in the running, either at wide receiver or at, uh, at defensive back, and, and we do think that he can step in. Uh, Aaron Klein had a fantastic year for us last year at corner, also from Wakefield. Are you from Wakefield? <laughs> no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't even know anyone knew who those two guys were. But uh, Aaron, uh, <laughs> their mother's not. So uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron had a great off season, and, and we really think he could do a great job of replacing Chad. Now, there's some things that Chad did that were, were special, and, and everyone likes a guy that can make plays, and Chad can do that. But we feel real good about both those young men from Wakefield. Steve, do you have a guy that can that can stretch the field a little bit like Trey Johnson did a couple years back? I mean, uh, that big, lengthy receiver. I mean, obviously, Bloom came on with right. a tremendous season last year. But do you have really that that uh, threat yeah. on the team? Most people don't know this, but I'm going to let this out of the hat. I have that kind of speed and have that ability, but <laughs> no longer have eligibility. And so that's kind of a negative. Uh, no, that's that's not true. But I heard Kalen could stretch a field like that. Uh, you know, we, we're hoping that Antoine can do that for us uh, and has the ability to do that. And if Joel's on offense, he possibly can do that as well. He has very good speed. But uh, Antoine and Bo are, both have, have good speed. Uh, you know, Trey was a pretty special football player. And, and so those guys, with those guys, we have to do things a little bit different. Coach, there's a lot of football between now and then, but the last game of the season will certainly be one to look forward to. Yeah, who do we play? <laughs> uh, uh, definitely, you know, we really, you know, uh, we're really looking at Dakota Wesson. Uh, they've got like 38 starters returning. So we're, we're very concerned in that area. Uh, and so we really try to keep our focus on that. So that's a long way off. And uh, uh, a lot can happen between now and then. Anything else? Is it 38 or 40? What, what, how many starters do you have to return? Uh, 